Heritage on RFD-TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. We met Tim about five or six years ago at a horse show, and uh, Tim introduced us to his services where he will bring in horses, log your property, and uh, use that lumber to build furniture, do the moldings, do all the, all the woodwork in the house. So we uh, toured a few years ago one of the houses Tim had done, and then uh, uh, the place was beautiful. They had um, wood floors, uh, lots of wood cabinetry. Uh, Tim does all kinds of unique things with the wood. He uses different coloring, uh, not just a single like oak throughout a house. He uses uh, elm, maple, uh, walnut. He likes to mix it together and get the uh, a lot of color out of the wood and really enhance the house. And we're both big into horses, especially the draft horses. We've got uh, uh, four draft horses ourselves. We love them a lot. And we think it's a great time to watch the horses working out there. Actually, Tim let me drive, uh, pull a tree out of the woods last fall. Um, he let Jenny drive yesterday a little bit. And uh, we got to help out a little bit. And to us, it's fun. It's, it's nice to see that the property's not torn up by the skid loaders or other heavy machinery. So we started a project. We have um, purchased 40 acres that was part of the original homestead of Jeff's family. Uh, it's been in their family for about 100 years. So we bought 40 acres out of it and wanted to build a retirement house, a barn, and then eventually an arena for our horses. Uh, so it was a, a wooded land and we wanted to do something unique with, with the trees that are there. And uh, one of the additions is uh, part of the barn is going to be a showroom for our business, a big black horse that we're running currently. Uh, right now we've pretty much outgrown our current place and we need a place that people can stop in and uh, visit us there. As we had the draft horses, we found uh, that, like a lot of people, there was no uh, equipment out there for draft horses. Uh, you couldn't even go and buy a halter that was big enough for a draft horse. So uh, we came up with the idea, well, maybe other people had the same problem that they couldn't find uh, their equipment for their draft horses and so forth. So uh, that's really what launched uh, Big Black Horse, was uh, the, our own need to find equipment, and then we decided to develop a business around that. We're also at a number of the shows we've done early on, uh, people came up to us and said, well, hey, uh, uh, we many people have trouble finding tack and harness and whatnot too, so we added that as a line. So we, we like to say we specialize in mini pony and draft horses and then carriage driving and we kind of skip the standard tag that you can go to your local uh, store and, and find that in. So we, we just kind of skip the middle part. One of the things we're trying to do on this project is uh, get some diversity of species. And so far, a lot of what we cut on the first uh, area that we cut was uh, hard maple. And uh, so the vast majority of the project is, is working with hard maple. but. We want to have a little bit of ash. We've cut some ash and some red elm. And now we're going to cut some, some oak. And uh, this is a huge, huge oak tree. Um, <clears throat> as you can see in front, there's been some wind damage here to uh, an ash tree that's up front. And that's blowing down over there and busted up. And then on this big oak, there's a lightning strike that's went all the way down through it. So. Um, I don't know how it's going to cut out, but we're going to knock it down and, and see what's salvageable out of it and uh, use this for the part of the house project. A couple of things we're looking at doing with this is uh, fireplace mantles and uh, doing some quarter sawing with it and uh, putting that into the project. So we'll lay this down and then we'll see what's in it. Sometimes you get some pretty good wood and, and in a situation like that, that lightning strike it could be hollow inside too so we'll just have to see what comes out. Well, we thought it was a unique way to be able to um, utilize the wood that was on property and kind of a heritage to the, the uh, family farm you know, to preserve the wood as well and uh, do something unique with it. So we had Tim come out and take a look and see what he thought of it. And, he said that there was a lot of potential out there with a lot of uh, large maple trees. He said there was some additional um, ash and oak and so forth that he could pull in. So we had uh, decided that it would be uh, an interesting project to have him come out and do that. Uh, when we initially talked to him, uh, he uh, said, well, we needed to know what we need, wanted to do with the wood, which was kind of surprising. 
uh, at first, but then after we see the process and how he cuts different woods based on how you want to use it. So we had to make a lot of decisions up front, but uh, it's turning out to be a very interesting project. We're excited to see what that turns out in uh, the finished product when we get to building the house. It's a pretty good log. It's It's got some rot in the center here, about six inches. And here's that lightning strike that went through. Um, it's, it's gone through quite a bit of the tree, but I think we can work around that in the sawing process. I don't know if we'll get a, any good mantles out of it, but it certainly will it'll render some really nice quarter sawn material. And uh, especially up on this side here. Um, I think we got a clean face going down here. So um, this will be a nice piece of wood. Now we just have to get it out of here. Now uh, what we'll do here is we'll dress it up here so we can uh, so it'll skid easier for the horses. And I'll set some some rollers underneath it so when I pull it out away from away from here with the horses, uh, it makes it easier to get it started. What we're going to do is try and set up a cradle hitch. This is really a heavy log and we got to go up the hill onto the road. So we got to give them every advantage you can of this. Now what I started to do when I was bucking this is I started on the opposite side of where I'm cut and I cut through on that side. This is such a big log. I got a 36 inch bar on this and it can barely reach through. But I cut on the back side and I come through and then I'll cut down. I'm gonna put a wedge in. I'll cut down to about the center and then I'll come down underneath and cut up. Now the reason for that is I'm trying to get the last piece of wood to hold, I want it in the center of the log. You get the, the least amount of damage when it breaks loose. If I cut clear to the bottom, she'll splinter up the log. So the closer I can get that to the center, the more likely I'm going to get good wood without it fiber pulling from one log or one side or the other.
what I'm going to do is I'm looking for the easiest path to get my horses through and get them back out without cutting the most. I don't want to cut very many trees. So I think I'm going to swing them in through here, back up, hook up, and then I'll pull through here. And I may have to cut a little opening there on the other side of that oak tree. So we'll uh, walk it out and see what we come up with. If, uh, if I'm setting a log, and what I mean by that is setting the chain on the log, and I don't have anybody to assist me with it, I always come up to the log with my horses and I face my horses like they are into me. And then I put the chain on under the log and if I got any, do any maneuvering, I've got the horses facing me. The reason for that is if they should spook or something, I can get a hold of their heads and their lines if they're facing me, if they're going the other way, they're one step away from a gone. The other thing is, they have a mindset too, and their mindset is if they turn around, that means it's time to pull. They have an attitude about pulling, and when they're facing me, watching me work, they, they uh, tend to be more content and will hold for me. I've got my chain set here. So one is I got my slip hook on the log. I always put my slip hook on the log. It chokes the log. And uh, if I need an extension with another chain, I got the grab hook on the other end to do that. But as I pull this away, I've got it set on the back side of the pole. I'm gonna pull that way. And so that gives the horses some pull, some leverage when they start it. So they're rolling the log. And that helps them get momentum going. So we'll do that. I'll pull it, and then once they get it straightened out, I'll back it up, and then we'll try and set. Uh, we'll try and set it up for uh, a cradle hitch. to give that a try yesterday and uh, it definitely helps to have well-trained responsive horses to do that but uh, we were maneuvering around in areas that you wouldn't think it would be possible to take three horses in a, in a cart.
Oh. One thing, working with both Tims, uh, I learned a great deal that I never knew about logging and about horses and about you know cutting up wood. How uh, wood products get made? That's right. Hard to help. I think all we we built houses before and worked with wood, and it's all a finished product. And you don't you know you just figure it you know they cut up a, a tree and then you've got boards. But to uh, actually experience where, as I said, the very first time. Uh, we talked to Tim, and he's like, well, what do you want to make out of it? And I was like, so why is that important? And then when you start to see them cutting up the tree and figuring out what piece goes where and what do you need for this, uh, it was a real experience to, to learn how a tree uh, really has to take shape and how you have to think about it even as you're cutting it um, to see what the finished product is going to be. And that was, that was a, a unique experience for me. I think the most I do is uh, just uh, cutting down the stuff that, mostly the stuff that's fallen down, um, because we intend to uh, heat part of the 
place the house or the barn with a, one of those outdoor wood stoves or wood burners and I think I've learned a little bit to help me out with that because uh, we'll have to collect all the wood out there we'll probably drag some of it back with the horses uh, some, some of that we've learned and uh, use it to, to heat and heat a little bit and keep the property cleaned up the woods cleaned up so we can uh, safely drive through the woods as well yeah yeah we have a four cart ourselves so uh, I can see that we'll be uh, using our draft horses probably to, to move logs and to move things around. And Maybe not some of this big stuff that Tim right. takes down, but... But yeah, I, I think it gave us a, a little bit of an experience of how, how to do that. His horses are well trained, uh, they, they listen to him, uh, they do what he asks and they can pull a lot of weight on those. Some of those logs were huge, that, uh, the oak uh, that uh, they took down yesterday was just a very large tree. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things we've enjoyed or appreciated about working with horses and draft horses in particular is the fact that um, it's not the same as a pet. You're working on a relationship, you're working on a partnership, you've got a job to do and you've both got to be engaged um, to do that. So your horse demands things of you, uh, certain expertise, trust and things like that and then you have uh, expectations of your horse and I think that makes it a unique relationship like no other one and that's one of the I think the real um, interesting parts of working with horses and even more so I think when you get into uh, farming or, or like logging or things where you're actually doing a job or a task and uh, both you know you and your horse have to accomplish this together.